गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द सेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टेक द ओवर व्यू ऑफ एंटायर न्यूज पेपर सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट विच आर्टिकल्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन न्यूज पेपर देन वील टेक डिटेल डिस्कशन सो ऑन फर्स्ट पेज वी हैव आर्टिकल इजराइल रेडीज फॉर अटैक एज अ मिलियन पीपल इवैक्यूएट सो दिस आर्टिकल इज गिविंग अपडेट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द हमास इजराइल वॉर हाउ एवर ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल देर इज वन डिटेल्ड आर्टिकल ऑल्सो दैट हैज कम इन टेक्सट एंड कॉन्टेक्ट वील टेक दैट आर्टिकल then further moving on new investment slowed again in quarter 2 of 23 24 so basically guys the fresh investments between the period of july to september okay they have not been good okay have been 13% lower okay now this is largely because of the uh, this is largely largely because of the slow down that is going on in economy which has been exacerbated which have been enhanced because of the geopolitical crisis that are going on such as the russia ukraine war after that there is also the high inflationary trends that are going on okay so because of that particular thing in india also the investment sentiments are getting impacted fine then moving on after that we have these advertisements etc and then moving on in city section we have the regional articles and largely these advertisements tenders and all such kind of a things are given so directly will reach to editorial section because still editorial much important relevant articles have not been there now in editorial we have first article the israel hamas conflict and nusebai's analysis okay now guys uh, i have read this particular entire article uh, one thing i just want to tell you that as this israel uh, israel hamas issue is going on every political commentary is not important you need to understand the broad theme in last week i think four or five articles we have taken up in fact there is more relevant article that has come on israel hamas war that is the war crimes and international treaties and convention so that particular thing we are going to take up however in this particular article guys how the petroit petroitic for uh, forward is taken up and all such kind of a things have been given up then further moving on the world needs to stop taking water for granted now this is a relevant article for uh, how the water is leading to challenges on agriculture front and on many the developmental front we are going to take it up now this article is talking about recently prime minister has announced that india will try to host 2036 olympic games okay and in this particular capacity the article is talking then further moving on closing the gender pay gap in workforce will take this particular article for exam state of play article not important for exam point of view then guys further moving on in this particular direction few come close to the hitman in world cup cricket again no need to go in the article for exam then on text and context we have this article israel hamas and the laws of war so this is a good article for ethics paper number 4 issues ethics of war we are going to take up this particular article then moving on the un approved kenya led security mission to haiti this article also we will be taking up for examination then further moving on guys this is a cash article why french ai firm mistral's language model divides the developer community so mistral which is a ai development firm it has come out with a new large language model which will compete against the meta's llm okay now how it is different why developers are divided some people have said that it is a dev good dev development while others are not liking it so those kind of details are given however understand this thing such kind of articles are not relevant for examination because you are not uh, because you are <clears throat> we are not preparing for computer sciences and the article i have read it in upsc examination we largely need to see science and technology and the developments of science, uh, applications of science and technological developments okay in that capacity i will not recommend you to go and read this particular article it is going on core computing it is discussing the core computing so therefore no need to go too much in detail then further moving on study estimates count of uav required for the three services will take this particular article for the examination india against all form of terrorism so guys we have seen last week also that right now under the g20 uh, parliamentary speakers summit is going on fine where india has put this thing in fact last week prime minister all prime minister also had said very categorically that india is against all the forms of terrorism terrorism in any way cannot be justified for any reason whatsoever okay so similar thing has been given now here we have one important article sri lanka moves towards rcep bangladesh in queue we'll take this particular article for examination in detail then further moving on congress won't repeat 30% of rajasthan's mla so largely here political articles have been given which are not important for examination no need to go too much in detail in that then further 
मूविंग ऑन एट एम एल एस ड्रॉप्ड इन छत्तीसगढ़ कांग्रेस लिस्ट अगेन एंटायर पेज इज फिल्ड विद द पोलिटिकल आर्टिकल ओके सेंटर लाइकली टू रेज एज ऑफ रिटायरमेंट ऑफ साइंटिस्ट टू सिक्सटी फाइव नाउ इन दिस पर्टिकुलर कैपेसिटी गाइज द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी मिनिस्ट्री इज वर्किंग ऑन दिस प्रपोजल दैट द एज ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट नीड्स टू बी इंक्रीज टू सिक्सटी फाइव नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट प्रेजेंटली एज ऑफ साइंटिस्ट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट विंग सच एज आई सी ए आर इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर रिसर्च आई सी एम आर इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च ओके दे आर रिटायरिंग एट एज ऑफ सिक्सटी सिक्सटी टू फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन आई सी ए आर रिटायरमेंट एज इज सिक्सटी आई सी एम आर रिटायरमेंट एज इज सिक्सटी टू गवर्नमेंट इज थिंकिंग टू इंक्रीज दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग टू सिक्सटी फाइव ओके सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट हैज कम अगेन नो नीड टू गो टू मच इन डिटेल इन दिस फॉर एग्जाम देन फर्दर मूविंग ऑन हेयर वी हैव आर्टिकल Railway develops anti-freeze flushes fuel tanks for journey in J and K. We'll take this particular article with respect to the indigenization of technology in railway. Then further, Kaziranga uh, reopens with tribute to British era officer. Then guys, in world page, in world page you see US warns the prospect of Iran getting engaged in war. So this is in context of Hamas Israel war that is going on, and there was a speculation that Iran might support the Hamas. So US has given a very strict warning on that particular thing. now on world page understand this particular thing guys that russia ukraine war one article was fixed earlier now israel hamas war so on that particular thing developments are coming you need to understand that every development which is reported in world page is not important however if indian interest is provided at some in some article or india's foreign policy is there or some india led initiative is being given that is you need to see okay so uh, blinken raises hamas issue with saudi leader during west asia tour okay uh, again guys moving on so uh, here then we have money wise page so today is monday on monday business page doesn't comes this money wise page is there which contains largely investment portfolio management related advices and for upsc we are not really required to go in this thing should you worry about mid small cap fund now find what type of share as shares are performing good no need to go in too much in detail for that then we have the sports page here okay and then after this after this we have science page now in science page some day good articles are there however some days there are the articles which are doing analysis of some uh, uh, some research papers some theories are being debated that is actually not important because at core theoretical physics etc you need not to go now if we see today's science article so what is today's science article new quantum engine does work by flipping the identity of atom so recently physicists they have created a quantum engine which will convert the energy difference between two quantum states of some atom into work now this particular uh, depiction have been given here and explanation of this uh, quantum engine is being given now again understanding we are not preparing for some uh, we are not Uh, we are preparing for upsc and very clearly in syllabus official document which is released by upsc they say that level of question will be such that it will try to test your general awareness and a educated person without any specialization would be able to answer that so in these core research papers okay research theories fine you need not to go so i will not advise you to go in this particular article if you have interest you can but not for examination so this is overview of entire newspaper and now let's discuss all the relevant articles that are in their newspaper one by one in detail okay so as i have told you this is synoptic notes of this entire art, uh, this entire session you can download it from our telegram channel link for telegram is given in description box in youtube in every class we start with the gs quotation which can be used to complement your gs answers as well as in essay you can use them so today we'll take quotation from carl rogers so carl rogers says the only person who is educated is one who has learned how to learn and change how to learn and how to change so real, uh, real learning real education is not just the mugging of facts real education real real, uh, real learning also lies in the fact as how to learn how to adapt okay how to reform how to evolve okay so learning involves how to evolve how to adapt with the changing circumstances and after that how to bring a meaningful real change so learning involves in becoming not dogmatic rather becoming pragmatic so learning makes a person pragmatic 
लर्निंग मेक्स अ पर्सन टू एकोमोडेट न्यू पैटर्न ऑफ थिंकिंग एज वेल एज इट ऑल्सो मेक्स अ पर्सन टू एक्सेप्ट द चेंज विच विल बी फॉर द ग्रेटर गुड यू कैन यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर आइडिया इन जी एस पेपर नंबर टू एजुकेशन एज वेल एज इन एस ए यू कैन यूज इट बिकॉज नाउ फिलोसफिकल एसेज रिफ्लेक्टिव एसेज आर बींग नाउ मोर आज इन एग्जामिनेशन सो वी कैन यूज इट नाउ मूविंग ऑन एंड लेट्स टेक फर्स्ट आर्टिकल फॉर टूडे सो द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप इज फ्रॉम टेक्स्ट एंड कॉन्टेक्स सेक्शन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स रीड हेडिंग ऑफ आर्टिकल एंड देन विल टेक वेयर दिस आर्टिकल इज गोइंग टू बी इंपॉर्टेंट इन आर पेपर Article reads Israel, Hamas, and the laws of war. Now, this particular article we are going to use for GS paper number four, topic six, ethics of IR, ethics of IR, and within the ethics of IR, there are issues of war. There are issues of war that are there. Okay, ethical issues in war, and in fact, on this particular theme, a question has also been asked last year. the question was that russia ukraine war is going on what ethical issues should be considered before launching a war so that was a question that has been asked already now israel hamas war so again on issues of war question in ethics can be asked now first of all let's understand this particular thing but before that i would like to explain you some basic background information and after that understanding that background information will go in this particular war now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about ethicality of war there have been few view point that whether war is ethical or not for gs4 it is very important please note it down also side by side okay so when we talk about war there is a pacifist there is pacifist theory of war now pacifist they provide this particular thing war can never be justified all war will lead to suffering of people war will lead to destruction and therefore war can never be justified war is never ethical if we take example of mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi was a pacifist thinker he never justified war for anything even there is gandhi ji's quotation that you can use to understand this thing gandhi ji said that what difference it makes to dead hungry impoverished that as, as as whether the war was fought in the name of totalitarianism or in the holy name of democracy okay gandhi ji says that the people who have died they are dead okay people who have lost their homes now they are broken how it matters to them that whether you fought war for democracy's restoration or in totalitarianism it doesn't matters to them so war is evil war is unethical so pacifist they will never justify war then there are realist there are realist now realist says this particular thing war is a practical tool to solve dispute to solve con uh, confrontation they say this particular thing that often national interest of one country will come in conflict with the national interest of other or sometimes what will happen there will be certain type of disputes which cannot be solved without the war so war is a practical tool and they say this thing that why you are bringing ethics in war war belongs to separate domain ethics belong to separate domain war is a practical tool for them realist then there comes one more view point on war and we call it as just war theory just war theory now what is just war theory just war theory provides this particular thing that see as far as possible war should be avoided as far as possible war should be avoided but in certain circumstances it becomes impossible to avoid war war has to be fought in certain circumstances and there ensure that you are following certain ethical principles you are following certain ethical principles and if we just take example to understand this theory better we can take example of the battle of kurukshetra in mahabharat so we find this particular thing that earlier a lot of attempts were made by uh, uh, by lord krishna fine and even the pandavas also tried to ensure that the war doesn't happen but kauravas were adamant okay they were not ready to listen and therefore only way out was to fight a war but certain ethical principles were followed so just war theory says avoid war if not possible if war is the only way out then ensure that war is being fought on certain ethical standards and within just war theory there are three ethical standards that are there that are to be followed now we call at now so they are called as just 
जस एड बेलम जस एड बेलम जस इन बेलम एंड जस पोस्ट बेलम जस पोस्ट बेलम नो वट डज इट मीन जस एड बेलम जस एड बेलम मीन्स जस्टिस ऑफ द वॉर बिफोर फाइटिंग द वॉर बिफोर फाइटिंग द वॉर you need to ensure that you are not fighting war for wrong reason you need to have a strong cause you need to have a strong cause just in velum just in velum justice in the war during the war certain ethical principles have to be followed with respect to the type of forces that can be used type of munitions that can be used what amount of force can be used disproportionate force should not be there you cannot attack on civilian population so such kind of things need to be kept in mind just in in bellum means justice in the war and then comes just post bellum just post bellum means justice after the war justice post the war for example after war has ended ensure this particular thing post war treaty needs to be signed on the basis of fairness for example uh, the prisoner of war that have been captured by either of the sides they need to be exchanged and you earned due burden should not be imposed even on the country who has been lost okay so before war in war after war these three ethical principles are there within these principles then there are sub principles also that are there but right now we will not go too much in detail otherwise we'll get deviated from our core topic now this particular article uh, sorry this particular article also is mentioning about these principles that is the just ad bellum just in bellum these two principles are being discussed here why they are being discussed let me give you a little bit of a more context to understand it see right now we saw that first hamas carried an attack on israeli civilians now there was no provocation from side of israel but hamas carried an attack on civilian population where innocent people children old people they died okay it opens up an ethical issue now israel has started counter attack on hamas and it is being said that israel is using far more force that should have been used here and it has been seen that israel is almost it have made israel has made their mind that they are going to put gaza to its complete end is it ethical so these ethical questions have now developed between israel israel hamas hamas war now when we talk about when we talk about international law international law there are two type of a questions that have been dealt by international law when war is concerned number 1 under what conditions or when can countries use force when can countries use force okay just ad bellum when the war can be taken up why the war can be started up certain grounds are there just ad bellum fine i have just told you justice of the war why or what grounds war should be taken up and then just in bellum once war has been started once war has been started what military actions are permissible what type of bombs what type of weapons are allowed what type of weapons are not allowed so these are the two principles that are there now when we talk about when we talk about international law on these things such as just ad bellum just in bellum in this particular direction we have we have geneva convention of 1949 and its additional protocol of 1977 and these particular questions they are discussed under international humanitarian law fine how to use the force when the war is to be taken up all these things have been discussed under international humanitarian law and international humanitarian law is provided under geneva convention of 1949 so i hope you understood that these questions as whether war should be taken up or not or if started what type of weapons are to be used these things are discussed under international humanitarian law international humanitarian law is provided under geneva convention okay this is something now it largely largely geneva convention and international humanitarian law it aims that collateral damage of war should not happen innocent people civilian people should not suffer if a war has been taken up so it main aim is to protect civilians it is to protect civilian as well as to reduce the suffering of war reduce the pain of war as far as possible now first of all first of all international humanitarian law provides this particular thing that during a war during an armed conflict always a distinction should be made between combatants and between civilians so the people fighting from other sides they could be attacked but innocent civilians can not only be can never be attacked it has been provided that only you can attack on combatants 
you can attack on military targets but no attack on civilians no attack on civilian objects civilian buildings schools hospital etc now when we talk about this hamas's attack on israel so hamas they say that our territories has been captured by israel they are their settlements have increased and post 1967 okay their settlements have increased okay a lot and because of this frustration they carried an attack yes we say that okay israel should not have captured the territories but but killing innocent people of israel by hamas first it is also unethical it is also unethical so here hamas's role is purely unethical now after hamas attacked now the israel has started the counter attack and in that capacity israel has dropped 6000 bombs on gaza 6000 bombs on gaza in gaza around 2 million people are living okay so point is that whether dropping 6000 bombs is it proportionate use of force no it has been said that this is the disproportionate use of force and disproportionate use of force has been not allowed it has been ethical so there israel as well as hamas both are breaching 1949 geneva convention okay so this is one issue that is coming then the next is the question of uh, issue of hostage taking so we have seen this particular thing that israeli citizens israeli citizens has been captured by hamas and they are going to use them as bargaining chips they are going to use them as bargaining chips in this particular capacity we have rome statute and within rome statute there is article 8 article 8 says that hostage taking some innocent civilians they are taking as hostage by either of the party it is unethical and it is it is a war crime it is a war crime okay so under rom statute which is a treaty established by icc Inter international criminal court it is a war crime and therefore hamas has created a war crime by taking israeli citizens as hostage so it is again unethical now if you now guys if you see this particular thing if you remember uh, when we were taking overview of newspaper then on first page there was this article that has come let me show you first okay so let me show you this article first yes israel readies for attack as a million people evacuate now what has happened just two three days back i have shown you that article also that israel they have dropped the pamphlets from air on people and they are saying in these pamphlets in these papers they are saying that you please go to southern part of gaza northern part we are going to attack we are going to bomb and they have given very less time to people of gaza that they can shift to the southern portion they have given the warning to go there now if i just tell you little bit about gaza if i just tell you little bit about gaza so guys understand this particular thing already already israel has already israel has imposed air blockade of gaza as well as sea blockade of gaza strip since 2007 so means that the people of gaza they can not go anywhere all the people are just being asked that you just please shrink to the southern part is there adequate space to accommodate all these people no and as israel is asking people that all of them should shift to south and before that israel has cut down their gas water electricity now it is being said that it is that it is it is a kind of a collective in collective punishment it is a kind of a collective punishment okay so israel plan to cut down their food electricity water and now asking them to go to south part which is not able to accommodate all of them they cannot go anywhere because air blockade sea blockade is going on it is a collective punishment and it is again violating the geneva convention because innocent civilians they are being punished for the crime which they have not committed for the crime which they have not committed and because air and sea blockade is there they don't have any place to go so point is that hamas as well as israel both are committing war crimes during this particular thing which is an outright violation of geneva convention of 1949 and violation of principle of just ad bellum and just in bellum so this is something so this is something that is we need to ensure and guys uh, one thing is also still there that israel is a democratic state and as the world democracy such as usa are also involved in this particular matter all need to ensure that uh, that morality and ethicality should not be compromised so this is about all this particular article now moving to next article moving to next article uh meanwhile guys if you are liking the video and if you think that we are putting an effort in the initiative please do hit the like button 
as your engagements help our channel to grow as it pushes the youtube algorithm to promote our channel so your engagements are very crucial please do please uh, ensure to like the video if you have really liked it then moving on next article un approved kenya led security mission to haiti now this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 international affairs gs paper number 2 international affairs now first of all before going on in this particular article let's first understand some basic geography so when we talk about haiti when we talk about Hi haiti haiti happens to be a country in caribbean region a country in caribbean region you can see here we have haiti here we have dominican republic just a minute so here this country is haiti here we have cuba here we have dominican republic here we have puerto rico okay here we have jamaica so this is haiti here in the caribbean in caribbean now when we talk about haiti recently haiti has applied to united nation security council so unsc united nation security council it is one of a principal organ of united nation okay now why they have applied to unsc for what thing they have applied so we have seen that recently large number of armed gangs they have taken over in haiti and law and order problem in haiti have declined to a grave extent and the police of haiti is not able to deal with these gangs so they apply to unsc that unsc should help them to restore law and order again in haiti and on this particular thing consensus was not being made from last one year or so but now finally it has been agreed that unsc will be sending their forces to haiti so that haiti's police can take over the armed gangs that have taken over so let's understand this particular issue little bit in more detail so basically basically guys we find this particular thing that october last year october last year the country of haiti went in a crisis because a group of gangs group of armed gangs that is g9 and family g9 and family this is a group of gangs what they have taken they have taken a control over the entry of main port fuel port that is the verex port okay and because they have taken over this particular port supplies of oil have reduced okay and because of that particular thing electricity supply has got disrupted even clean drinking water was not available in haiti because of that hospitals are facing crisis cholera outbreak happened there and virtually a state of chaos state of lawlessness is going on in haiti because of this group of gang g9 and family has taken over in haiti now haitian prime minister ariel henry applied for international assistance and he applied it to united nation security council but united nation security council very clearly said one thing to haiti that we are not going to lead this particular mission because all the time unsc's credibility comes under question so therefore they were not sending the forces but now finally what has happened kenya kenya has decided that we are the one who are going to lead this particular mission and kenya will lead the mission and then they will be helping the haitian police to take over this particular crisis therefore now this thing is going to start now usa usa has said this particular thing that usa is not going to send any of their soldiers but usa has agreed that they will provide 100 million dollar of assistance for logistics for example they will provide logistical support intelligence support communication support air lift operation etc will be provided and now a multinational security mission a multinational security mission will start understand multinational security mission will start where different different countries will contribute their troops kenya will lead the mission usa will not contribute the troops usa will give 100 million dollars of money okay now when we talk about guys haiti what was the reason that unsc was apprehensive to take up this particular mission now see this particular thing 2004 to 2017 there was a un peace keeping mission that was going on in haiti because earlier there was a rebellion that was taken up and to bring peace 2004 to 2017 this un peace keeping mission was going on but at that point of a time it was said that uh, un uh, peace keeping personals and there were a lot of atrocities that were committed okay and all such allegations have been made so because of that they were not ready but now kenya will take over the lead this is guys all about this article beyond that no need to go and read even a single line on this fine then moving on sri lanka moves towards rcep bangladesh in queue 
Now this article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number two, international groupings, international groupings, and India's interest in international groupings. Okay. Now by the way, this article is discussing about RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. For that thing, I have given you the extra details in this red color where we will first discuss RCEP and then we'll go in this article that what article is actually talking about. Okay, let's discuss this. Let's discuss this. So RCEP, what is this RCEP? RCEP guys stands for, RCEP stands for Regional, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. It is a free trade agreement. What is a free trade agreement? In free trade agreement, countries agree that they will reduce their tariffs, they will reduce barriers for trade and free trade will be promoted. For example, country A and country B, they will reduce tariff barriers, they will reduce non-tariff barriers, okay? Discrimination with each other's products will not be done. That is a free trade agreement. However, every free trade agreement will have some particular details. It will depend on agreement to agreement. So, RCEP is a free trade agreement between 15 countries, between 15 countries. First of all, let's see what are these 15 countries. So basically, when we talk about the 15 countries under RCEP, there are 10 ASEAN members, 10 ASEAN members, Brunei is there, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. These 10 ASEAN members are there. And then five non-ASEAN members are also there. That is China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. These are 15 countries of RCEP. When we talk about India, India was a founding member of RCEP. India was a founding member of RCEP, but India has now dropped out of RCEP. Why? Because in this, in this, India has a concern over the mobility in service and professionals. Okay. So they will be able to the mobility of services and service professionals. This is one concern, but beyond that, Two other big concerns are there of India. What are these two other concerns? Concern number one. Concern number one that in this thing, China is a member. And what will happen if free trade agreement will be signed? India has to reduce the barriers. In fact, it has been said that 90% of the tariff barriers are to be reduced within two years. 90% of tariff barriers are to be reduced in within two years. So China will get a free entry of India. And China will dump India, uh, will flood India with cheap Chinese made goods. And we did not want it that exposure. If you see, already from 2020 onwards, we have taken up Atman Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, where we are trying to reduce the dependency on China. So, so because of the China, we walked out of this. And then second, then second is, now see, if you see Australia is a member, New Zealand is a member. Now, when we talk about Australia particularly, Australia has a very strong dairy sector and if we would have signed the agreement Australian cheap dairy products okay might have again entered the India and might have impacted the Indian agrarians cattle rearers so for that particular thing India has decided to walk out of RCEP okay so we are not the part of this these are the 15 countries which are part of RCEP now when we talk about RCEP RCEP happens to be world's largest FTA by total trade value by total trade value and these countries they constitute 30 percent of the global gdp and i told you that 90 percent of the tariffs will be reduced within two years so this is rcep now guys when we talk about rcep now we find that india's immediate neighbor that is sri lanka and bangladesh now they are looking to join rcep they are looking to join rcep for example first of all when we talk about sri lanka sri lanka why sri lanka is joining you might be knowing this already that Sri Lanka faced economic crisis and now it has taken the help from IMF. IMF under extended fund facility has given a bailout package to Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka is now looking for economic revival. And for this economic revival, it says that we want to integrate with other regional partners. It will give us economic opportunity. Sri Lanka says this particular thing that China, Japan, South Korea, Okay, we want to extend our economic partnership with them and by that we might be able to get exposure. Okay, so this is one thing, this is one thing. Then guys, when we talk about Bangladesh, when we talk about Bangladesh, you understand this particular thing that right now Bangladesh comes officially under the least developed countries. 
Bangladesh right now comes under least developed countries. But by 2026, Bangladesh will be removed from the list of least developed countries. Now, as right now, Bangladesh is in the least developed countries, so Bangladesh gets a lot of preferential access. For example, if Bangladesh is exporting any good, there will be virtually no custom duty by the developed country. So, a lot of preference, a lot of benefits Bangladesh gets when it is exporting its product. But by 2026, it will be removed from the LDC. So, all those things will go away. So, before that, Bangladesh wants to diversify their economic partners, wants to diversify the countries with which it has a free trade agreement so that Bangladesh can keep on exporting the goods. Now, Bangladesh is looking forward to become an export-oriented economy. And for becoming an export-oriented economy, Bangladesh needs to be the part of these particular kind of groupings, particularly manufacturing, garment manufacturing, cheap manufacturing is something which is a specific specific strength of Bangladesh. So, Bangladesh want to integrate. So, therefore, guys, now they say that when we will join RCP, these countries are of a view that we will be able to get exposure of the countries such as uh, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand. They say that we will be able to move out of South Asia and Southeast Asia to the countries such as Australia, New Zealand, etc. So, they are willing to join it. Now, when we talk about India, India as of now has not given any official comment, but India sees it as a development of concern. Because if in immediate neighborhood, Chinese cheap made goods will enter and if, chi and if the integration of India's neighborhood with China will happen, at the end of the day, it will be a strategic concern for India. So, this is about the India's dimension in this. However, as of now, they have not joined it formally. They have just shown the interest. They have just shown the interest. So, this is about it. This is about it. I hope that you have understood it. And now, moving to the next article. So, uh, fine. It's fine. Then, moving on. Okay. The world needs to stop taking water for granted. Now, this particular article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 3, Agriculture. GS paper number 3, Agriculture. As well as GS paper number 2, Social Justice. Also, we are going to take this particular article. Now, let's start with discussion. Okay. Fine. So, basically, guys, today is 16th of October. And 16th of October is observed as World Food Day. 16th of October is observed as World Food Day. And theme for World Food Day this year, 16th of October, theme of World Food Day is Water is Life, Water is Food. Water is Life, Water is Food. And it emphasizes importance of water in supporting life, importance of water in supporting agriculture. And if water is not there, agriculture will not be possible, food will not be there. So, water is food. Water is food. And it has, push, it has given an appeal to the world countries that countries need to treat water resource very efficiently and very wisely. In fact, guys, if I tell you, it is also said that if there will be the third war, third world war, sorry, then that third world war would be on the resource of water. Some people also saying this particular thing that already third world war kind of thing has started because multiple wars are going on right now. On one end, Israel Hamas war is going on. On another end, Russia Ukraine war is going on. So, there are different, different viewpoints in there. Now, coming into this particular article. So, guys, today we see that countries are facing extreme, extreme weather phenomena. They are facing challenges such as droughts. They are facing floods. Somewhere there are unseasonal rainfalls and somewhere there are dry spells. So, either abundance of water or the dearth or, or, the, or the lack of water. Indirectly, water is one which is leading to multiple crises in the countries. Now, countries, now it has been provided that there are less than seven years remaining since, now see, in 2015, world countries agreed on sustainable developmental goals, within which there were 17 goals and within 17 goals, 169 targets are there. Already, we are in 2023 end. 2030 is the deadline. 2030 is the deadline to meet these 17 SDGs. Less than seven years are remaining. Less than seven years are remaining since our deadline of SDG comes. And we will not be able to meet it. We will not be able to meet it probably. So, it has been provided by many agencies. For example, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, Food and Agriculture Organization, 
इंटरनेशनल फंड फॉर एग्रीकल्चर डेवलपमेंट आई एफ ए डी एंड वर्ल्ड फूड प्रोग्राम वर्ल्ड फूड प्रोग्राम दे से दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट इन ऑर्डर टू मीट एस डी जीज वी नीड टू पुट अ फोकस ऑन वॉटर मैनेजमेंट वी नीड टू पुट अ फोकस ऑन वॉटर मैनेजमेंट कोलेबरेटिव अप्रोच इज नीडेड वेयर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स कैन कम टूगेदर टू कंजर्व द वॉटर ओके कंजर्वेशन एवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ स्कार्स वॉटर ऑन ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी नीड टू फोकस इमीडिएटली वी नीड टू फोकस इमीडिएटली नो आर्टिकल इज सेइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग आर्टिकल इज सेइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट स्पेसिफिकली व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट इंडिया नो गाइस 60% नो अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग 60% ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इन इंडिया इज रेन फेड एग्रीकल्चर व्हाट इज रेन फेड एग्रीकल्चर मींस 60% ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल फील्ड्स दे डोंट हैव इरिगेशन फैसिलिटी दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन रेन दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन जस्ट रेन सो 60% ऑफ इंडियाज नेट सोन एरिया 60% ऑफ इंडियाज नेट सोन एरिया is rain fed means they depend on rain and this 60% area is responsible 40% of india's food production so therefore if rainfalls get impacted if rainfalls get impacted fine then our food security will get impacted and therefore it has been provided that this rain fed agriculture it is large directly dependent on water availability rain soil moisture variations and if there will be any change it can impact them nutritional security food security of india can be it can be impacted so urgent need is there to ensure that climate change that is happening which will impact the rainfall that is to be stalled that is needed to be stopped that needs to be controlled then further moving on today article says that for so many of the years so many of the years there has been poor water management of india we have not treated water as a resource okay for example for example poor water management's example Haryana and Punjab are the states which on an average see rainfall within the range of 40 to 55 cm but these two states are growing paddy and paddy needs a minimum 100 cm of rain they are able to grow paddy by tapping ground water this is an example of poor water management misuse of the water water pollution is going on because of this particular thing what has happened water as a resource has got degraded water as a resource has got degraded then further extreme weather events today okay that is flood drought etc what they are doing they are impacting the water availability and severely they are impacting agricultural production agricultural production moreover rainfall which is changing according to ipcc six assessment report it has been said that biggest impact of climate change on south asia will be the shifting rainfall patterns now all these particular things are going to impact agriculture again so we need to ensure very carefully that how we are treating the water and climate will impact the water as a resource now government has assessed how the climate change will impact the agriculture production food production and they have done some climate projections and according to climate projections done by the government they say this thing that without adaptation adaptation without doing anything fine india's yield india's rain fed rice yield by 2050 will reduce by 20% by 2050 india's rice yield will reduce by 20% and by 2080 india's rice yield on the rain fed farms will reduce by 47% specifically fao food and agriculture organization in states such as andhra pradesh karnataka himachal pradesh it is taking up the crop forecasting crop uh, crop forecasting projects also it is taking up where it is analyzing the water availability soil moisture it is analyzing the soil characteristics so farmers can make informed decisions informed decisions with respect to the agriculture with respect to the agriculture now guys these are some of the projects that are being taken up by international agencies for example fao then there is also there is also international fund ifad international fund for agriculture development now what the, it is doing it is supporting the states in leveraging the mg narega now mg narega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act it provides 100 days of paid employment to every household for unskilled work now how it is utilizing these labors under mg narega can be used for making pond for making rain water for making better infrastructure for rain water harvesting etc so how mg narega can be used for for water management fine that is being Uh, that is that that is being taught then further fao fao food and agriculture organization it is supporting sustainable transformation of agri food 
systems climate smart agriculture okay how to improve water efficiency by using uh, drip irrigation sprinklers etc such technology transfer is being done in these states such as maharashtra odisha etc fine now further what we need to focus more upon what we, what we need to focus more upon or a kind of a way forward okay so what we need to focus upon innovative and proven technologies that allows farmer to increase their productivity here israel is a very good case study because israel uh, though israel a large part of israel lies in the semi arid areas but still in agriculture they have established progressness so how technology how technology innovative technology can be used by farmers to increase their productivity we need to introduce such technologies second environmentally and socially viable and financially viable irrigation and water management strategies now environmentally viable water strategy now let me give you one example suppose there are certain farmers they are growing some crop but they don't have water for water what they can do they can tap the ground water by few wells they can bring the water as farmers in haryana and punjab have done water as a problem will be solved but it is not environmentally viable it is not environmentally viable financial viability small farmers sustenance farmers cannot use water water pumps they cannot use the tube wells so we need to bring such technologies for water which are environmentally socially and financially viable okay fine environmental viability is very important then after that reduce the climate footprint of agriculture production reduce the climate footprint of agriculture production as well as biohazards environmental pollution that a lot of agriculture is doing okay then next is bring sanitation and drinking water supplies close to rural household which is also an objective under the swachh bharat mission so this is something that we need to focus upon okay so therefore article uh, it is it is being said that just a minute yes so united nations food agencies okay such as the wfp and all of them they are working with the government okay and they are working on many projects solar for resilience secure fishing framework okay revival of millet program in fact 2023 is also being celebrated as international year of millet so these are the initiatives on which the un system un un bodies are helping india please use in your answers please download this synoptic notes and use it directly in your answers so that is all guys about it and now moving to the next article moving to next article closing the gender pay gap in workforce now this particular article we are going to see with respect to gs paper number 2 social justice gs paper number 2 social justice women related issues women related issues in fact in gs paper number 1 also women related issues are given first of all let me give you some backgrounds so that you can understand this article so last to last week we have discussed nobel prizes we have discussed nobel prize in chemistry physics medicine literature peace and economics so economics nobel prize was given to claudia goldin has been given to claudia goldin now claudia goldin has talked about the inequalities that women face in labor market claudia goldin works largely focuses on gender pay gap that exist in labor market this article is on the same line okay this article is on the same line now article says this particular thing that when we talk about women women a they are not imagined that they should be in the workforce because traditionally women has been assumed that they should be homemakers they should be staying in the home so that they can do domestic work male have been seen as primary bread winners but anyhow anyhow if women enter the workforce they are always paid less than man okay why number 1 there are the social social prejudices that are there number 1 number 2 often women they have also lower education then man why because always men has been preferred as the bread winner now it has been said that betty friedman in 1963 has specifically focused that how even the educated women they have to become stay at home mothers because when a um, women gets married 
because domestic responsibilities are always assumed to be of women when they are married when a woman becomes a mother child rearing burden falls falls on women she has to take a leave from the job she has to drop from the workforce and the educated women also become stay home mothers stay home mothers okay now claudia golden claudia golden who have won 2023 economic nobel prize has worked on the same thing that how women are suffering in labor markets now betty friedman in 1963 said this problem has no name this problem has no name now on the same thing now claudia golden has worked now claudia golden provided this particular thing that parental responsibilities make it difficult for the women to take on jobs long working hour jobs now it is being said that often jobs which pay high salaries they also have they also have rigid schedules they have unplanned schedules for example here there is one example that is being given that for example that is for example a person working in the private equity firm a person working as wealth manager a per person working as a higher level manager okay they have to they have to work for they have to work late nights they have to stay for late night dinners they have to stay for late night meetings and in lieu of that they get the fat bonus now often women cannot stay late in the they cannot stay for late dinners they cannot stay for late night meetings because they have to go home and they have to do their domestic responsibilities so an arrangement has emerged over the year that men will go out and work women will stay even if they are of part of the labor force they will drop out of the labor force okay and even these demands are incompatible with raising children okay uh, when so therefore a couple when they get married and they have children women often they take mommy track women often take mommy track means they become the mothers and they lose they abandon their career now professor goldin said this particular thing that this inequality is also because of the greedy work greedy work so basically it is being said that the today the type of corporate world it demand demands extraordinary effort from their workers okay extraordinary effort from their workers there are the they need to work beyond the office hours also so professor goldin provides this particular thing that we need to restructure the workplaces today so that the workplaces don't rely on heroic efforts means workplace don't rely that 18 hours you are spending in the office 20 hours you are spending in the office we need to restructure the entire workplace so that moderate working hours are there predictable schedules are there so that the women can also follow them women can also follow them now professor goldin also said this particular thing that it was expected that it was expected that service sector will offer opportunities to job okay service sector should offer job to women okay which were not given by manufacturing sector rising education should increase employment which earlier was not there declining fertility should free up women's time okay because now women have a few children it should free up women times but actually it has not happened fertility has declined service sector jobs have come women have got educated but still they are not a substantial part of labor force and if they are in labor force they are not getting equitable salaries so for that entire workforce world work place is to be restructured in this capacity so that is all guys about this article now moving to next article railways railways develop anti freeze flushes and fuel tanks for journey in jammu and kashmir now what this article is talking about so basically guys government has an ambitious plan to link kashmir to kanyakumari through railway and in this in this there is udhampur shrinagar baramulla rail link that is being taken up that is being developed udhampur shrinagar baramulla rail link in jammu and kashmir is being taken up now there is one problem that railway has struck out with and the problem is that in these particular regions during the winter temperature goes to below zero and in that water will freeze so in railway coaches how the water will come in taps if the water will freeze so in this capacity rail coach factory kapurthala has come out with some indigenous innovation indigenous innovation now understand this thing the lhb coaches that are being used they don't have a temperature control system they don't have temperature control system so what they have come out with they have designed a double walled composite insulated water tank so as you have thermo steel thermo water bottle with you it is a double insulated double layered uh, bottle double layered bottle in which there will be an insulation layer of foam so that it it 
ensures that if a liquid un inside the bottle is warm, it stays warm, and if it is cold, it stays cold. So, same type of water tanks are being designed, which will ensure that water stays in liquid in sub zero temperature for 16 to 20 hours. Then, secondly, in pipes, in pipes, they are coming out with the heated pipes, heated pipes, heated pipelines across the railway so that in the pipes water do not get freeze. So, this is something that they are working on. Okay, this is about it. However, no need to go too much in detail. No need to go too much in detail. Briefly, you just need to see it. Okay, that is all, guys, about it. Now, moving on to next article. Study estimates count of UAV required for the three services. Now, again, guys, no need to go too much in detail. Just understand what is the crux of this article. So, basically, basically, guys, we see this thing that the chief of defense staff chief of defense staff okay general anil chohan ordered conducting a study on major military platforms used by three services okay actually they have ordered the study to see uavs unmanned aerial vehicles and armored helicopters which are being which helicopters and uavs unmanned aerial vehicles are being used how many we need which, which type of technological platforms in case of UAV and helicopters are needed. This study has completed UAV part and they have said that 31, 9, uh, 31 MQ 9B high altitude long endurance UAVs and 155 medium altitude long endurance UAVs will be needed by the forces. Also, they have said that also they have provided this particular thing that when we talk about helicopters, when we talk about the helicopters, around 156 light combat helicopters will be needed. Now, in this capacity, this hail, high altitude, long endurance UAVs, for this deal has already been signed with USA. And if you remember, we have seen this particular thing also just one and a half month back. Again, no need to go too much in detail. They have just carried a study that how many helicopters, how many UAVs are needed, what, how many are there presently. Now, these data etc. are not asked in the exam, nor even in mains examination such kind of information is needed. So, just for your awareness, I have taken it up, but for exam, no need to go too much in detail in this. So, that is all guys about it. And now, the mains practice question for today. So, question reads, India needs to adopt innovative and collaborative approaches for improved management, conservation and availability of scarce water resource comment. So this will be GS paper number 2, GS paper number 3. 10 marker question. So that is all about it. I hope guys that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to the today's session. That is all for today. Now we will meet tomorrow and guys if you have liked the video, please do hit like button. Please comment on the videos. I really feel motivated when I see your feedback. Thank you so much.